It's episodes like these that really showcases why I love the Uprising arc so much, and I will admit in the manga, the pacing for this arc was iffy, to say the least. Even Isayama the mangaka admits to this, and it's why he wanted the anime to fix what he considered a mistake when he wrote it. But even with iffy pacing, it still was the best arc of Attack on Titan at the time. And this arc is just being so wonderfully adapted. Yes, it is a lot faster paced, but I think the structure is a lot tighter in the anime. They're cutting corners here or there, they're cutting out maybe some more iconic funny scenes that were present in this arc, but it's not needed for the actual story, and how they're just condensing this arc in a much more digestible way to just view the anime, is wonderful. This episode, I love the false alarm. When I read in the manga, it was amazing. The whole idea that you have to really show the corruption inside the government. And I love how the king, he sits there all menacingly. He looks like a total badass. His character design's great. Even when things aren't going his way, he just sits there, arms crossed kind of a thing. And then you realize that he's just some dude in kind of being used as an icon and he doesn't even know what the hell's going on. He's sleeping half the time. It's brilliant. But Erwin and everyone in this room, like, I love Pixis the most because he's the kind of guy, if he believed that the current government cared about the people, he would let Erwin hang. It's simple as that. Even though he likes the guy, he wants what's best for humanity. And I love the idea of this kind of overthrowing the government. You need one last push. And what you need is the soldiers inside the wall to side with you. Sure, they have some muscle right now, but if you have to go against the military, police, everyone else, like, it's not going to work out that well. So you really have to show just how corrupt this current leadership is. And sure, you can argue, well, I mean, at least they weren't going to let humanity go extinct, but they were willing to let half of the alive humans die because they thought the walls had been breached. And I love just seeing how everything functions. It's so believable, and I think it really highlights... Isayama's writing in the best, like this is why at the time the Uprising arc was my favorite arc because it really showcases Isayama's character writing so damn well. You're seeing just the soldiers, how they're reacting, Niall, all the characters, and just really showcasing like, I'm not on anyone's side here, I'm on the side of humanity and you guys just showed your true colors. If push came to shove, you wouldn't protect the people, whereas someone like the, you know, the Survey Corps, they would protect the people, and I love how just everyone eventually ends up turning, and new leadership is being set. It's so damn good, I love how it was functioning, it was snappy, it really, it gave me chills. Even though I knew it was coming, I was just waiting, I was eagerly anticipating the reveal that it was just a false alarm, no Titans have actually breached. But how they reveal it, and then also just revealing that the current king, he's just like, oh, did you wake me up? I was having a nap kind of a thing. It's brilliant, and I love how the media and the people, like, it's not a one-man show. There isn't one person who could do this. It's a matter of the people, and that's ultimately what matters. And then there's also some people who just wanted to overthrow the leadership because they hated their guts, and that's just absolutely amazing. But this episode, it does a lot. Like, currently the government, it's kind of in place as long as they can get his story on the throne. And I'm not going to go into too much specifics with some of the Aaron and Historia stuff because I know where the royal family leads to, I know the importance of it, so I don't want to really highlight too much on certain aspects because I know it would then give anime onlys more of an idea of what is going on. And around this point in the manga, I didn't know the importance of the family. Why was Historia captured? What's the importance? What's the deal with Aaron and whatever the hell's going on when he's passed out? Like, I don't want to go too into those specifics, so I'm going to kind of leave those there and just talk about what has been revealed, just so I don't spoil people. So understand if you're wondering, like, why I didn't talk about a certain scene with Historia or the royal blood or what a character said it's because it would just give things away as i am a manga reader but overall like i said i love the structure of this arc this arc i enjoyed a whole lot when i was reading it and at the time when i was reading it i didn't really think the pacing was wrong but throughout rereads of the manga i have noticed the pacing it, it is iffy there's things that could be condensed and just rearranged a bit better and i honestly believe the anime is doing it justice i think i understand why isayama wanted to restructure it why he wanted the anime to fix his past mistakes, and I appreciate it when a manga author isn't so up his own ass saying like, I did it the best, no one can touch my thing, I want it to be page for page. He says, no, I admit back then the pacing was a little off, let's fix it in the anime because I've grown as a writer over the past 10 years. I love that and I love how the anime is making it a lot more structured and anime onlys are going to have a much more clear idea what's going on, but still having the questions like, can a titan really just start turning into a human if they eat a titan shifter? Like, it's making it much more kind of digestible, but it's still leaving so many questions, so the mystery element is still present with the overall presentation, I think, just doing it amazing. Like, you know, anime loves to do still shots where they kind of go through still frames to kind of show what happened, like with 
you know, Historia's father and how he lost his family. So that's why he ultimately went to Historia, his bastard more or less, because ultimately that's the only thing he had left in royal blood. And they used still frames, but I really liked how they detailed those still frames. So it didn't feel like cheap kind of like cut arounds for the animation. It actually added a lot for that individual kind of flashback. You didn't need to see it all animated. It gave enough emotional weight just seeing those still shots. And I love that. And I have to also mention the whole scene with Aaron in the cave. I've been wondering how they would fully detail it with like all the colors and lighting. I really like the overall presentation. We've only seen a snippet of it. So I'm really excited to see what's going to happen next week with just the overall presentation and how they're going to land it. But yeah, it's just seriously the characters, the military, how the government is being just portrayed in Attack on Titan is simply wonderful. And I can't wait to see where this is going to go. Let me know your thoughts, your theories, your speculations, whatever the hell you're thinking of Attack on Titan Season 3. Let me know down in that comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, remember to leave a like. And if you're new, also be sure to subscribe. So until next time, everyone, please take care. Have a good one.